is up, guys. ASMR CAC is here. Thank you so much for stopping by, and today we have the ultimate Fractaline Guide. Starting tomorrow, the Imperium Foundation event begins. It's a massive community project where we are putting together all of our polarized Fractaline in the billions to reach certain community goals. All while doing so, you're able to level up every single time lost bounty in your inventory by 25% every donation. So that means that you're going to be pouring in Fractaline, not only for the community's benefit, but for yourself and getting through time lost bounties like crazy. But all of this is going to require a lot of Fractaline, like thousands and thousands of Fractaline. So this video is going to go over all the tips, all the strategies, and all of the best activities you should be doing to maximize your Fractaline gains. And so, let's get started. But first things first, if you're watching this video, tail, stop, stop what you're doing. This is super, super important. You want to deposit all of your Fractaline right now. That's right, you don't actually want to save it up for the Imperium Foundation. And a lot of people are doing this. They're sitting on 5,000 Fractaline. They want to deposit it all when this event begins so they can instantly get an emblem. But again, you want to deposit it now and you want to invest it in ranking up all of your different obelisks. And this isn't just my idea. In fact, this is specifically recommended by Bungie themselves. Here's the tweet where they say exactly what I'm saying. You want to deposit your Fractaline into the obelisks to rank them up as high as possible before the Imperium Foundation event begins. Now, why do you want to do that? Well, it's actually because of one of the features of Imperium Foundation. Every single week, once this event starts, you're going to get Fractaline back. You kind of reap the rewards of an investment, so to speak, based on your total resonance. And your total resonance is just the cumulative levels of all of your different obelisks. So, this is a great way to think of it. If you have 4,000 Fractaline and you've invested none of it, all of your obelisks are rank zero, and you take that 4,000 Fractaline and rank up as much obelisks as you can, you're going to get 2,000 Fractaline back every single week. So yes, you're not going to be able to get that emblem for 5,000 deposited as quickly maybe, but in two weeks, you'll get your investment back, so to speak. And to the best of my knowledge, that is the math on the rate of return. Every single resonance rank will net you 100 Fractaline every single week, and it costs 200 Fractaline to increase uh, the resonance rank of an obelisk. You actually start with two free resonance ranks for the tower obelisk. So you'll get 200 every single week if you've done absolutely nothing. All right, so you may be wondering, well, I'm sitting on a bunch of Fractaline, which obelisk should I level up? And if you're concerned mostly about getting more Fractaline and just maximizing these gains, you really want to focus on the obelisk that has the activity you want to be playing. Each different obelisk has a different featured activity, and you can level up a certain bonus within that obelisk. Well, you can acquire that bonus for leveling up that obelisk resonance, you know, higher and higher and higher but the bonus makes it so that you're more likely to get a random 100 Fractaline gain for completing that activity. And for those activities, the Tangled Shore Obelisk has Gambit, the Mars Obelisk has the Crucible, the EDZ Obelisk has Strikes, and the Nessus Obelisk has the Sundial. So, to be honest, the most efficient is probably Strikes and the EDZ Obelisk. If you have a team at all, even solo, you can be pounding through Strikes very, very quickly. And if you've leveled your EDZ Obelisk up all the way, you know, once every three or four, sometimes once every two runs, you're getting 100 Fractaline. So if you just want to farm, put your nose to the grindstone and get that done, that is going to be your most efficient. But also, if you are more inclined to do other activities, if you play way more Crucible, if you play more Gambit, if you see yourself doing more Sundial, obviously level up the appropriate one to get those Fractaline gains. 
Now, very importantly, when you're doing any of these activities, you want to be sure to buy the consumable located in the tower obelisk that's actually going to increase your chance of getting that 100 fractaline drop. You can buy, I believe, five per week per account and just make sure that if you're farming these activities anyways, you might as well buy that consumable, pop it, and potentially go five for five, get 500 you know, fractaline in five strikes. That's really not that bad. However, while you're doing these activities, you should be buying bounties that you can sometimes be completing in the background to get even more Fractaline. Firstly, of course, we have the weekly like Fractaline Obelisk bounties. Every single Obelisk has two different weekly bounties that are going to give you 100 Fractaline per bounty when you complete it. And remember that you can actually just go to the Tower Obelisk and pick up all of these bounties at once. Also remember that they're not per account, they're per character. So you can double your Fractaline gains with these bounties if you have two characters, triple them if you have three characters. Remember to be switching through them and completing these. I actually have some tips for completing these uh, you know, even faster if you're farming these, but also remember, if you've done the Saint-14 quest storyline, and the best indication for that is if you're sitting there with the Bastion, that means you definitely have, Saint-14 becomes a kind of a new vendor and he has bounties that give you 50 Fractaline per completion and they reset daily. And a lot of these bounties, you know, killing Cabal, doing whatever, again, can just be completed in the background when you're doing the Sundial or any of the other four activities I talked about with the Obelisks. So, you're pouring all of your Fractaline into whatever obelisk has the featured activity you're going to be doing most. Then, you're grabbing all of the consumables and bounties that you can potentially complete in the background to get even more Fractaline. On top of that, one more thing is that you want to be sure to check your triumphs. Every single season of Dawn Triumph, pretty much, when you complete it and accept it, it gives you Fractaline for doing so. So, some of you may be sitting there with hundreds of Fractaline that you just haven't collected yet. Make sure to go into that Triumph page and click on all of them. Now, it should also be noted that the Sundial is the only activity that gives you guaranteed Fractaline for a completion. Like Strike, Gambit, Crucible, you have the chance of getting 100, but you're not guaranteed. You'll always get 10 every single Sundial run. So if you do have some teammates, or it's a day with really beneficial modifiers, like if Heavyweight is a featured modifier and you can go in and slay a Sundial run way faster than usual, that should definitely be a consideration. Also, don't forget that you get 100 Fractaline when you complete the weekly Sundial like challenge, when you've done enough Sundial to complete that weekly powerful reward. And you can do that on all three characters as well, remember. And while all of this is great, eventually the most efficient way is going to be completing those weekly bounties. So I have some tips for completing a lot of them much, much faster. Alright, so first off, look at the bounties you have and try to be completing or progressing as many as you can at the same time. For example, if you have the one for getting kills in a strike and you have one for getting Cabal kills, well, do a strike with the Cabal. Like, it's simple as that. Sounds simple, but if you can kind of be doing four at the same time, be doing a Lost Sector that's checking off four different boxes, that is really, really efficient. And you'll often have opportunities to do that void kills and then you have bow kills where you use a void bow right like stuff like that a lot of people neglect but it'll really help your progress now let's talk about more specifics there is a few that involve the cabal and yes you can do them in the sundial but if you want to get them done really efficiently great place is the leviathan raid you can load in there solo and especially for the bow precision kills one really really easy to complete in the castellum it's infinitely spawning red bar cabal you'll get it done in no time now for scorn kills i love going to this particular lost sector in the Thieves Landing location of the Tangled Shore. There is just a ton of Scorn here, and you know, they're pretty easy to kill. So, if you're using a kinetic scout rifle, for example, like that's an often one I'll pair while doing this, get those bounties done at the same time. Now, while you're in Thieves Landing, there's a great Fallen Captain farm for the bounty that requires killing those and getting precision snipe rifle kills. 
right off the spawn, there's a potential spawn point kind of in front of you. And then you just go up a little bit. There's another potential captain spawn point, as you can see when I kill this captain. And then head towards the Hallowed Lair Strike. And as you go in there, there is a guaranteed Fallen Captain spawn. And there'll be no one around in a public area to take this kill. So even if you're just getting those guaranteed spawns and then reloading in Thieves Landing, it'll go by pretty quickly. But you're almost always going to get one to two additional ones that spawn in that public space that'll go by in no time for hive kills honestly the lost sector in sorrow's harbor on the moon is just filled with enemies all those lost sectors are in fact the lost sector in anchor of light is fantastic for the fallen kills bounty However, a couple bounties that are going to take a long time if you're doing them wrong are firstly, the one for getting patrols completed, and secondly, the one for getting materials in either the EDZ or in Mars. Those can just be a huge struggle, but the best place I've found to do both of those is just the Trossland in the EDZ put on a ghost, like really importantly, put on a ghost that has like an EDZ scanner mod, something that let you see the dust-like shards when you're in close proximity and pair that with a sniper rifle. Remember, when you zoom down sights with a sniper rifle, when you have that ghost perk on, you're gonna be able to see dust like shards from way further away for whatever reason so remember that little trick when you're farming for them uh, but the patrols as well in the Trossland, there's quite a few patrols there's like four different ones you can do and they're pretty darn simplistic killing dregs killing enemies you know in total stuff like that very very easy to do and then honestly just reload the Trossland. I've spent a lot of time doing these and I found that it was way more efficient once I just started you know, traveling to orbit, going back to the trust line, going to orbit, going back to the trust line, because so many materials spawn there and so many patrols take place in such a small area that if I'm going all around the EDZ and going to the different places like the sludge and stuff, everything's so much more spread out. I'm spending a lot of time traveling. There isn't as good of a concentration for resources or patrols. So that's how I would recommend getting those done. And so guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, found this informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you wanna get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.